I am joined once again by Megan Colley. Megan, since our last chat, which was right before your Tough Enough uh, Championship fight, uh, since then you've added a piece of jewelry to your collection. Congratulations. Thank you. I, uh, yeah, that was an awesome fight, and I'm really happy that I got the belt. I actually don't know if you know this about me. This is our second interview, but I don't know if you know that I was actually a WWE heavyweight champion when I was like 12 years old, so I'm not trying to rub it in or anything. Wow, well, huh. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, <laughs> it's, it's been about a month, yeah, I think just slightly over a month since that victory. How does it feel to be a champion of uh, Tough Enough, one of my favorite organizations? It feels really good. Tough Enough is an awesome promotion. Um, I'm really happy after the victory. I've just been on like cloud nine, but I'm ready to go again. You know, it was only two minutes, so I was hoping that I'd have something in the works by now, but I don't. <laughs> well, hopefully that's in the near future. How did you uh, celebrate the win? So I thought that like it was going to be like this big thing. Like we're in Vegas. I'm with my teammates. Like I was like, yeah, we're going to go out and like party. We didn't. We like <laughs> went and we got tacos. And I don't even think I drank after the fight. Like we went, we got tacos, we all hung out. And then it's three hours behind from Florida. So by the time I was done fighting and eating, it was like midnight there. So it was like three in the morning, Florida time. So we were like, uh, you guys just want to go back to the hotel. I think I got a milkshake though, because the entire time, so the hotel we were staying in had a steak and shake in it. Oh. And, and I would walk by it all the time. And like, I love ice cream and milkshakes. So I was like, we're going to need a milkshake. So yeah, that was like the one thing that we did before going up to the hotel. I was like, I need a milkshake and I'm going to drink it in bed. <laughs> so that was like my <laughs> celebration. Hey, well, you know what? It's a great accomplishment capturing that belt. But I, I can definitely imagine why you'd maybe want that milkshake. Because during a training camp, you're very limited on what you can do, right? Yeah, it, yeah, I had to really watch what I was eating and and everything, and it was it was it was just tough. So I was really looking forward to that. I kind of when I'm not in camp, I just kind of binge. So I just really wanted that milkshake, and like every day walking by it was like it was haunting me. It was like Megan, don't get me, and I was like, no. Goodness <laughs> oh, <was> gracious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I do have to bring up a photo, and since I follow you on social media, I have to bring up a photo. It was kind of scary. It was right after that victory, and you said, when it's sparring day, and the face you had, I'm not even a fighter, but I'm happy I was not stepping across from you in the cage. Yeah, yeah after I posted that picture, I think that was like yesterday or something, a bunch of my teammates were like, I don't want to spar with you today. And I'm like, guys, I'm in really bad shape. And they're like, no. <laughs> I, I was talking to a pro fighter just I think probably a week ago and I asked him pretty much how he gets ready right before a fight and he told me that when he was in the amateurs he was able to st like stare oh Jesus Christ that was loud he was able to stare down and scare all of his opponents just by looking at him and then his pro debut he got scared because the guy because the guy looked back and he was mentally done he got looked at that fight him yeah That's yeah so funny but you know what Megan if, if you do that face before every fight I think that you'd probably you wouldn't have to like punch you just win yeah I'm I kind of notorious for having a bitch face as it is so it's like I always kind of have this just like I don't know face on so I think it is a little bit intimidating <laughs> yeah. well you want to know what's not intimidating uh, Cameron Chisholm Brungard he's a pro fighter he gets ready by listening to Disney music he literally walks out to the Frozen soundtrack and I think that's incredible yeah, I mean, I guess everybody has their things. That just, I don't know if I could do that. I mean, hey, if it works for him, though, right? Yeah, for sure. What, what music do you walk out to before a fight? Um, I kind of just, it depends every fight. Like, um, usually there's, like, one song that, like, I typically, like, listen to over and over and over again. I actually really wanted to walk out to, like, uh, some, like, hardcore rap this time, but I was like, no, don't do it. I always get like nervous like when I have to pick my music and stuff because I don't want to come off as arrogant in case I get my ass kicked. <laughs> so I kind of just pick something like that I'm just feeling the day of. You know, I'm actually pretty sure I have a perfect game plan. I'm definitely not a fighter. I'm, I'm like the complete opposite of that. But if I were a fighter, I would walk out to probably 50s music or some slow country song because what would happen and since I'm so used to it, I'm immune to it, I'd be wide awake happy. My opponent would fall asleep. I wouldn't have to do anything. I'd just automatically win. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just, yeah, 
news them. <laughs> I put way too much thought into that. Anyway, <laughs> also since our last chat, uh, more big news. Art of Eight Management signs you. It's a management company started by Misha Tate. I have the names written down. Robert Reynolds, Robert Callister, and I think Robert Reynolds, something I read about him, didn't he manage Imagine Dragons? Is, is that something I saw? Yeah, yeah. They, um, I guess they have like the Reynolds management and they have a bunch of like big acts. I think the Killers are also signed with them or have worked with them. So, but currently I work, I work with um, Rob Callister and Misha and they're really, really awesome people. And I'm really, I feel genuinely lucky to be a part of their team. Um, they're just, I, when I met them, I was like, all right, like these are the people like I want to surround myself with. I'm always, um, I'm like keen on, uh, having the best people around me and the people who have like my best interest in mind. So when we sat down and we talked, they're all about that like team mentality. And that's me, you know, before I make any decision, I consult my coach. Obviously, I'm going to consult Rob and Misha. And I consult my main training partners and see how they feel about it. Because it's not just me, it's, it's everybody. So yeah, I just feel genuinely lucky to have them on board and be a part of their team and then be a part of mine. That must have been a really, really amazing uh, experience. Uh, obviously, be being able to you know meet and talk with only one of the best women's fighters of all time. Yeah, it was super cool. I've always looked up to Misha. She's like one of my idols in the sport. And so, like when I heard that she was managing, I'm like, I've got to work with her. Like, who else to like better to work with than somebody who's done it all? And then I remember like the first time I met her, I was just like. I knew I was going to meet her and I knew like we were she was coming in to watch me train and I was just like <laughs> I had that fangirl moment for a second because you know you spend so much time just like I, I've spent so much time watching her and studying her and I've listened to a bunch of her interviews and stuff so then when I found out like she was like yeah I want to work with you I was like oh my god really me <laughs> yeah really cool well I think I would have that exact same reaction I think I'd be near crying too <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was pretty cool <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for sure now obviously I'm assuming you're gonna want to defend that tough enough goal but do you have a kind of, a, kind of like a timeline for when you want to get back in the cage as soon as possible um, I'm getting I'm already back in the gym working um, training really hard uh, just kind of doing everything that I would as if I'm in camp again. Uh, I kind of just like to like I take like to take a little bit of a break and then I like to get back on it so I'm always ready. So when they call me and be like, "Hey, can you fight in six weeks?" Yeah. So I just want to get back there in there as soon as possible. I'd like to fight uh, maybe once, twice before the end of the year. That'd be ideal. Um, yeah, but as soon as possible. I don't remember if I asked you this in the first interview, but. Uh, do you have any uh, plans on turning professional anytime uh, in the near future? Yeah, I do. Um, by next year, for sure. I had written down like my coach makes us make these goals, and so he was like, "You need to put that like you're going pro by next year." Like he's like, "This is ridiculous already." So, yeah, maybe even sooner. Who knows? Um, everything's still kind of up in the air. We're trying to figure things out, but going pro in the near future is definitely happening. Well, I cannot wait to see you in the pro cage 100%. Um, I did want to get your thoughts on Joanna, uh, Joanna's recent fight. Did you did you have a chance to watch that? I did. I thought she looked good. I thought, um, you know, her striking was on point. Her takedown defense is always on point. She looks really good. She looked really good in those clenches and, like, getting off the cage. Um, like, just I when Tisha would push her up against the cage, she got that clench and she'd circle out. And I thought she looked damn good. Um, it's been like a rough couple of fights for her, so it's just, it's good to see like her get back on top, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, obviously, Tisha Torres, I remember when she was fighting for Invicta, like her wrestling is just so good. I, I think the term I like to call her is like a wet sweater because she like wrestles you and you really can't get away from her. So props to Joanna for being able to defend. Yeah, she had a great game plan going in and she was, she was prepared. They both looked good though. They both did, so it was a great fight to watch, really entertaining. Now, what is the key, uh, in your opinion, to beating Rose? Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, maybe go back to, like, what Carla did or what Carolina did, maybe just, like, outstriking her. And I don't even know. You know, it's so hard. She just, Rose, what it seems like is every single fight she evolves and she gets better. And it seems like every um, thing that she was lacking, like, gets better. And, um, 
one thing is is like Rose's mental. Like I think that was one of her um, her her downfalls maybe or her rough side was just that like her mentality wasn't I, I don't know but uh yeah she like really worked on that and she got strong and she didn't let you know, Joanna intimidate her and I just I think that if she's just in like a clear headspace it's gonna be really tough to beat her she's good everywhere yeah I actually remember when Joanna rose like I think maybe it was a maybe it was a first and second fight jo Joanna was talking so much crap to her and Rose just, it didn't even look like it phased her in the slightest yeah, dude, she was saying, like, the Lord's Prayer when girlfriend was in her face. That That's intense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I guess that's a benefit of being mentally strong because in MMA, definitely, as you know, you can train incredibly hard. But if you're not, you know, in that right mental state, you're just not going to perform the best of your abilities. Yeah, yep. If you're not there, if you don't believe in yourself, if you let somebody else get in your head, if you have any doubts, uh, it messes with you the second that you let like a negative thought slip in your mind like it's there and there's no getting it out so it's like it's really important to stay positive and like have that good mentality going into a fight or even training yeah so. for sure for yeah. sure well the floor is yours anyone you'd like to thank uh, you know for this management and you know for your last win yeah obviously like uh, if I have to I have to thank Rob and Misha for signing me and uh, for supporting me they've been awesome and then I have to thank my teammates. Uh, they are incredible. Felicia Spencer, she just won an Invicta, uh, what was it, like last week or two weeks ago? An incredible rear naked choke finish. And she's my main training partner and like my motivator. So I obviously I have to thank her. My head coach, Mike Lee, like put so much time and effort into me. And so does Brian Fisher, Fisher my jiu jitsu coach. And then Luke Putze. He's one of my main training partners. Like, we go at it. He beats the hell out of me. It's awesome. Uh, he makes me so much better. And, like, Jason Valle, he's another jujitsu guy and pro fighter at our gym. And he really, like, invests a lot of time in helping me. Like, I have, like, a core group of people at the gym who just really, like, every time I'm like, you want to train? Like, you want to spar? Like, you want to do this with me? Like, can you help me with that? Those, like, core group of people are always there. Like, I... I always thank them and they're like you don't have to oh and my coach Alec Brooks like Alec put so much time and effort into me he's always holding pads there was like four times during camp where like he's like oh I got plans with my girlfriend but like I'll stay a little bit longer for you and I'm like no you don't have to and he's like no I will so like they when it comes to my fights and stuff they always put me before themselves and it just I really appreciate it. I'm surrounded by really, really great people, and I think that's the key to, that was the key to my success in this fight, and they really believe in me.